What's up guys? We've got another exciting update for you today regarding Apple's upcoming iPhones and some very exciting products in between there. So lots of leaks to discuss and I just want to mention we've got a little over two months until the upcoming iPhone. It's hard to believe September is almost here. We've already begun summer. Time really does fly. It was only a moment ago that I was picking up the iPhone 10 and just admiring how beautiful it was. So new iPhones coming very soon. Let's start with the newest leak on those and that's the Geekbench that has leaked. A new model of an iPhone 11 at 2 has leaked and this was reported by Consomac. They saw that someone logged a Geekbench a test on a supposedly new model and this one is just a little bit different. You know, blinking you'll miss the differences here. Uh, there is one concrete difference and that's the RAM. It has four gigabytes of RAM and that was actually earlier reported that four gigabytes would be the standard on the iPhone 10 and the 10 plus in 2018. The 6.1 inch model will stay at three gigabytes which is more than plenty for a budget and model. So the Geekbench results here are quite good. I mean, they're roughly about 10% better than the A11 chip found in the iPhone 10. And if you ask me, the iPhone 10 is not lacking in power at all. But uh, yeah, here are these scores in comparison to a regular iPhone 10, not much higher. The actual clock speed goes from 2.39 gigahertz to 2.49 gigahertz. And this is for those two high-end cores. This is still a six core processor, but supposedly this one will be moving to seven nanometers. Now TSMC actually published a statement earlier saying that their seven nanometer process is about 40% stronger or more powerful than the 10 nanometer, and this translates to an Apple A11 versus the Apple A12. So I'm a little surprised to see the scores at this low, even though, just like I said, I've never used the power, but never utilized it fully. It's just, I expected a little bit of a bigger jump here. And just so you guys know, there are many possibilities of what this could be. This could be the 6.1 inch with an Apple A11 chip that's slightly overclocked over the uh, standard one right now in the iPhone 10, so we'd get slightly higher scores with that. The A12 could still still be a monster and this might not even be it. And while we're on the topic of chips, Samsung is trying to produce chips for Apple once again. As you guys know, ever since the iPhone 6S, TSMC and Samsung used to make the chips and then Apple went just to TSMC because their chips were just slightly better over Samsung's. And Samsung since then has been improving their processes and they're trying to introduce a new feature called extreme ultraviolet lithography and they're gonna introduce it faster than TSMC. So hopefully they wanna capture some of that market share of Apple's chips in 2000. And 19. Now, thanks to Makatakara, we've actually got our first look at the fast charger to be included in the box of this year's iPhones. And it's a little bit different from the schematics that actually leaked not too long ago. So it's not as bulky, but still pretty bulky compared to Samsung's version that comes with our latest smartphones. It has a USB-C port, which is great because the continuity now between your MacBook and the cable you use on that one, and this is there. So I like that. It's going to charge at five volts over three amps or nine volts over two amps. So it'll definitely be fast than the one included in the box right now. It'll be true fast charging and it's about time that Apple included that in the box. And there's been another leak with more dummy units of the upcoming iPhone lineup. So these could have been easily 3D printed. They don't really necessarily mean much, but it does give us a pretty good size perspective of this year's upcoming iPhone lineup. We've got the 5.8 inch, which of course is real. And then the 6.1 inch with a single lens camera and the flash beneath it. So it doesn't really tell us anything new, but it's great to see that size perspective here. And of course you have that mammoth iPhone iPhone 10 plus with the almost 6.5 inch display. My choice is going to be this one. Of course, it's going to be almost the iPad territory. Okay. And the weirdest thing I've heard in a very long time, this is by Nikki Asian review. And they're saying that in an upcoming version of Apple's AirPods will actually be able to wirelessly charge the iPhone, a compatible iPhone by placing it on the back. So touching their NFC pads together, it is ridiculous. I mean, it's kind of cool sounding, but how probable is it? Would Apple be making a new version of the AirPods? case, would this be compatible with the wireless charging one coming out very soon? Is that why they're taking like a year to release it? It's a very interesting concept, but would it work? There's a 400 milliamp battery almost in the wireless charging case of the AirPods. And how much could that really charge your iPhone? I mean, Apple would probably have to release a much bigger version if you actually wanted it to make a dent in your battery, but I couldn't see it being as sort of an emergency measure. Now the report isn't very clear because it is translated. So it's hard to make out the details, but it could very well be that the iPhone could charge the wireless charging case of the AirPods possibly. That may be it. And The Verge actually gave a really cool prediction. What if the wireless charging case could become a wireless charger with you, you know, when you go somewhere? Like you plug it in, of course, you'd still have a charger there, which is a bit redundant. But if you're at a hotel, you plug it in, you'll still have a wireless charging pad to set your phone down on. That would be kind of interesting, right? So wireless charging AirPods that could charge your iPhone or vice versa are in the works. And they're saying that it could come out as soon as the end of this year. 
So Apple's cooking some very interesting things. Oh, and Mark Gurman just tweeted this not too long ago. Nothing concrete, but what if the air power were to cost $150? And this may be some sort of hint at that. $150 is definitely on the expensive side for you know a wireless charger, but it'll charge three devices at one time. And some wireless chargers can get pretty expensive, $50, $60 or so. And Apple charges $80 for the Apple Watch wireless charger. So $150 isn't unreasonable, especially if this thing has a custom chip inside of it and a custom OS just to charge your phone. And you know they were ironing out bugs and software glitches on it. So this thing is very complex and the $150 price tag is definitely going to reflect that. Now Ming-Chi Ko has published another report from his new investment firm on Apple and it is a very big one. So I'm gonna break this down into several sections, but beginning with 2019, he said that 2019 Apple will have marked innovations in their iPhone lineup and other areas. So it's gonna be a very big year for Apple, both in hardware and in software. And that's what I wanted this year, but I guess we're gonna have to wait until next. iOS 13 is rumored to have a full redesign of the home screen. The iPhones will be getting possibly a triple lens camera. He says that that's still very likely to happen. And if it were, it would provide a lot of business to the camera companies associated to Apple, of course. So hardware wise, there will be a massive update as well alongside software. And he still expects there to be three iPhones later this year, the 5.8, 6.1, and 6.5 inch. The LCD is saying going into 2019 will still be outselling the other models and it will stick around next year. So uh, OLED isn't going to be standard just yet. And Ming-Chi Ko believes that this year may be one of the biggest in terms of upgrade cycles. There's a lot of people out there on the iPhone 6, 6S, 7 even that just haven't seen a very good reason to upgrade just yet. The price point is too much. So the 6.1 inch with an entry level price between $600 to $700 will actually invite a lot of people over to upgrade their phones and that'll create a very, very big upgrade cycle. He also believes that this year will be the year Apple will introduce a new and redesigned Apple Watch. A 15% larger display, as previously rumored, it'll have a larger battery capacity, so more battery life because of a physically larger battery. And there will be some new health tracking aspects, possibly some new sensors in there. I'm very excited for this one. I love my Series 3, but we haven't seen a redesign since the inception of the Apple Watch. And he says this is the year that Apple will finally redesign the Apple Watch. Now, a new report from a Chinese website, 21st Century Business Herald, is saying that two models out of the three of this year's iPhone lineup will support dual SIM capability. However, the iPhones that'll have the two physical SIM card slots will only be available in China. There's a huge market for these things in China, and they believe that the reason many people switch over or don't go to Apple is because they don't have this support. But dual SIM will still be available everywhere else as Apple is implementing an eSIM alongside the physical SIM card slots in the iPhones everywhere else. So you'll be able to go to a carrier and program your phone to actually work with one number and then be able to use a SIM card to enter another. And I thought this was an interesting point. So from developer Steve Trotton Smith on Twitter, he actually pointed this out. In iOS 12 beta 2, Apple introduced the trackpad feature where if you just hold a space button, you can move the cursor around without having to use 3D touch. And he believes that this is a step stone towards a device without 3D touch. In case you guys forgot, the 6.1 inch iPhone coming later this year was rumored not to have 3D touch. And he believes because of Apple adding this functionality, it could actually point out and hint that Apple is removing that functionality and possibly in future iPhones as well in favor of more software gestures like hold and wait. And there's been a massive report regarding Apple's audio strategy going into 2019. So Bloomberg is reporting that starting with the AirPods generation two and not just the casing, the actual redesigned AirPods, and by redesigned, I mean just updated with new features, most likely won't see much of a change there. They're saying that it will have waterproofing. It'll have increased range from your phone. So the W2 chip could possibly be upgraded to W3 even. And I love the W2 one. I can be across a basketball course and still have it streaming perfectly fine for my iPhone. So it's very, very great. But of course, there's always room for improvement. And they'll be improving the noise cancellation with some active noise cancellation technologies. There were some patents for that earlier. And Bloomberg actually believes that there may be two versions of the AirPods. You'll be able to buy a low-end model and a high-end model with even more features. And those features could be Hey Siri support, so that'll be actively listening to you. And there could be a biometric sensor in those as well, like a heart rate monitor. So if you don't have an Apple Watch or possibly it'll work alongside the Apple Watch, you'll get some information from your AirPods. It's very interesting how Apple will be dividing those into classes. So depending on how much you want to pay, you'll get different features depending on the class of AirPods. And yes, Bloomberg is reporting that Apple is working on high-end over-the-ear headphones. And these are gonna compete with Beats, but they're gonna be in a whole nother class. They're gonna be the more expensive version of the Beats headphones, have more native features with the iPhones or whatnot. And I'm very excited for these. I love my Beats and the bass they produce, but
but an Apple made version could be infinitely better. And lastly, they mentioned a HomePod 2. So Apple is working on a different version of the HomePod, unknown if it'll be a Gen 2 or a smaller version of the HomePod, but most likely will be the smaller version as it was rumored that Apple will be producing a sub $200 version of the HomePod that'll be more for smaller rooms, possibly even portable, who knows? But uh, that one could be interesting as well. And this one isn't related to the iPhones, but something that will be on your iPhone and all new iPhones going forward, Apple is actually going to completely revamp their Maps application. And as soon as tomorrow with iOS 12 beta 3, we're gonna be seeing an all new Apple Maps. And this is going to be way better than what we currently have as Apple has been driving around all of America. I've personally seen them in their little vans collecting data. And they're basically making their Maps application more dense, have more information about parks, about roads. They're gonna be able to update them much faster now. So they're removing their reliance on TomTom Tom and instead producing their very own maps. And this could finally mean good things for Apple Maps. Possibly it won't take you over an intersection like it's done for me, won't take you onto one-way roads. Like I've had the worst experience with Apple Maps and now that they're actually taking it seriously and rebuilding it from the ground up, it's going to be very, very good for it, I hope. All right guys, there it is, the latest report from Apple. So we saw our first look at the fast charger to be included in the box with the iPhone. Very interesting applications for future AirPods, charging your iPhones with them and uh, the upcoming iPhones will actually be around 10% faster, supposedly. And again, that could have been for the 6.1 inch model, which will just have a faster version of the Apple A11 chip just to keep the costs down. That's my personal opinion. I think the A12 will be an absolute beast and more than 10%. TSMC said 40%, so at least 20 to 25% faster over the A11 chip. So yeah, there it is guys, the latest stuff. I'll keep you guys updated. We've got two months to go, so the leaks should be ramping up from here on out. So we're gonna be seeing some exciting stuff here, hopefully. Maybe actually see the phones in full before. I mean, that would be a dream. But uh, anyways, stay tuned, guys. Peace.